Hello and welcome to the 10th round of the 2016 PCC Light Series season here at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Starting on the pole is J.F. Davila in the number 67, taking the pole over James Beverly. Uh, 2014 winner at Mid-Ohio, Jeff Fisher, qualified in third place. And as we go through the field, uh, here are some highlights from the PCC Trucks race. Uh, Chris DeSanta ascended, uh, entering the pit lane and flipped over and was towed back to his pit stall. That was very strange indeed, but... Uh, Sergey Yakovsky ended up winning the race. Uh, his first race uh, win since, I believe, 2010 at Decatur in the Cup Series. So uh, good to see that team getting back to victory lane. The Rus Autosport America team uh, doing a fantastic job in the in the uh, Truck Series. Uh, as we go through the grid on the bottom, uh, Trek Tauger had a decent qualifying effort in 24th. Uh, Carter Fitzgerald, who nearly won at Richmond, is starting 25th. Uh, we've got some cars way in the back that were way off the pace. Uh, Dan Branch, who started the truck race for AJ Murphy, is also starting the lights race for AJ Murphy. Uh, Clay Gibson is currently in uh, Europe right now, so he'll be unable to make the start. So Dan Branch is subbing for him and starting in 35th place. And with that, Jean-Francois de Villa, driver of the number 67 for Team Canada, leads the field to the green flag, going into turn number one, James Beverly getting a decent run on the outside. Beverly holding strong on the inside now, and uh, he's driving the 34. And Alex Posington, uh, team owner of Team Canada, qualified fourth, so it's a great showing for those two cars who were actually flirting with relegation earlier in the season, and uh, Posington's going to make it three wide now for the lead. On the inside, though, he didn't get a great run out of uh, there, going through the keyhole. And now coming down the back stretch, still three wide, but Posington's falling back. He doesn't really have a put, uh, drafting partner on the inside, and he's going to fall back in line behind Beverly. But Davila, coming now into turn number four, is going to get a run, and he's going to take the lead away from... Uh, James Beverly. Now here's Dan Branch, who, uh, this is his first ride of any kind since 2014 at Talladega, and, uh, I don't think he got this ride on, uh, pace because he's 35th place, and the only car he's been beating on pace, uh, all week is Matt Tauger in the 60, who's been absolutely dreadful in that, uh, Tauger Racing Unit car. It seems they're back to form after a stellar run at Richmond. Jeff Fisher, Trans Am driver, or former Trans Am driver, Trans Am champion actually, and winner of this race in 2014, is making the move on Lucy and Ekdal Jr. for second place on the outside. Ekdal Jr. and uh, Gabriel Messina, the two Ekdal uh, Autosport cars, are having a strong showing. They're both in the top 10. Ekdal's going to defend successfully, and he's going to hang on to second, but Jeff Fisher has some speed in that car. Uh, here is Sam Burkhart running in P11, the championship leader by uh, over a full race at this point. Uh, kind of strange not to see him running up in the top 10, but uh, this car definitely showed some speed in practice. He was up in the top 10, and uh, he's going to do a good job here today, I think, unless he runs into problems. Justin King right in front of him, the King of Cleveland, as he's uh, been known uh, after he won the Cleveland Grand Prix twice in the mid-2000s, running in 10th place. 15 minutes into this 45 minute race and J.F. Davila continues to lead over Jeff Fisher now who managed to get around Lucy and Ekdal Jr. for second place and he's been gaining on J.F. Davila. Davila, who already won at Chicago earlier this year, is looking to become only the third repeat winner of the season uh, after Sam Burkhart and this man, Zach Meyer, who won at Richmond uh, last week, is currently running in 14th place. Now he's not really known as much of a road ringer uh, but he is doing a decent job in this car, uh, just trying to keep it out of trouble and maintain as many uh, positions as he can. Uh, when, this, when the main series, the Cup Series, comes back from Europe, he'll step aside and let James Beverly drive this car. Uh, as Beverly's going for the championship, Meyer's just out here to win races and go for glory. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if he picked up a ride when he uh, got the boot from this 43 when that... Uh, or when... Uh, Lambert comes back to run the 34. Here comes Jeff Fisher now on the inside of J.F. Davila trying to make a move for the lead uh, through this twisty bit and looks like he's going to keep alongside of him, still alongside and uh, coming into Thunder Valley looks like he's going to take advantage and take the lead away from J.F. Davila. Uh, the Trans Am champion from a few years ago is uh, putting on a great showing here and looks to repeat uh, 
here at Mid-Ohio. Now, just a couple laps later, Matt Tauger's already going a lap down. He's about 10 seconds off the pace of the leaders, and he has just been dreadfully slow in the 60 car. I don't think that it's just the driver this week, uh, because we've seen that Matt Tauger can put together a decent performance. This car is just letting him down right now. Dustin Oliver in P17, second place in the points by uh, over a full race uh, behind Sam Burkhart, just trying to hold station. He's not really known uh, to be a great road course racer, and he's uh, really just hanging on and trying to minimize the damage. Dan Branch going a lap down with Fergal Sheedy, and uh, Dan Branch didn't really perform well in the truck race. I believe he finished in... Uh, 20th or 21st, two laps down, but he did collect damage in a first lap incident, so I guess it could be uh, crash damage, but this definitely is not. Uh, Dan Branch is uh, not doing so well here today. Here's the third place uh, driver in points, Matt Beck, uh, who's had a stellar year so far. He nearly won at Carbondale, but uh, he's running in about uh, 19th right now, and uh, Again, just trying to minimize damage. He's not really... In, oh, he made contact there with J.C. Carpenter. Uh, he was doing battle with uh, with Austin Sanders earlier there, who was having a good run himself. Jeff Fisher now, about halfway through this race, and he's got a lead over J.F. Davila, but he hasn't been able to pull away, despite being the faster car. J.F. Davila's been using the draft to keep with him, and you can see there, uh, Beverly's in the distance, so they're putting a gap on the rest of the field. Dan Branch now, oh, he just made contact with Matt Beck, and Beck had none of that and dumped him into the wall, into that tire wall, and that's going to be some rear-end damage on that 28 car. He's going to get uh, pull into the pits and have the rear deck lid removed on that 28 car. Here's Alex Posington taking fourth place away from Lucian Ekdal Jr. in the 39, whose uh, tires have actually started to go away a bit, it would seem. Uh, Posington has uh, kind of been overshadowed by his teammate uh, Davila this race, but Posington is actually higher in points than Davila, owing to uh, a bit more consistent performances from this 18 car. Uh, Ekdal Jr. slides off wide, and there goes O'Hanigan, so uh, that 39 car is really dropping back. Damon Jones is the first car to hit the pit lane, but I think this is a bit too early. Uh, we've still got about... 18 or so minutes left in this race, but Damon Jones brings his car into the pits. Josiah Hofacker makes contact with Dean Wormer, and he's going to slow on track. Something broke on that car uh, from 25th place, and he's going to bring that car to a stop there. Uh, he would get it refired and back to the pits, but this is a uh, disaster that Grand Strand Racing cannot afford. They're very close to the relegation line right now. Here's Lenore Scurry running in 7th place. Having a very strong showing, she's uh, up in the points. I believe she's in the top five right now. Uh, just trying to maintain position and do what she can to bring her team up to the Cup Series. Petrol Tech Engineering, a uh, longtime Cup team, uh, now in the Light Series. Lucy Nectal Jr., yep, uh, those tires were falling off so severely that he had to bring that car into the pits. And he's going to surrender ninth place. Looks like uh, Ryan Pritchard in the 964 is about to go a lap down here. Uh, just has has been struggling all week to find speed out of this Genesis engineering car. Oh, he nearly hit the pit wall there trying to get out of J.F. Davila's way. Uh, but Ryan Pritchard falls a lap down, and I think that's uh, another car up there that's about to go a lap down. Uh, as Jeff Fisher with about 10 minutes to go, yep, this is about the time we're supposed to see regular pit stops. Uh, J Jeff Fisher surrenders the lead to J.F. Davila, and he's going to make his one and only stop of the race. Justin King running in ninth place, coming up to lap Dan Branch. Oh, Branch cut him off there a bit, and he didn't like that. Justin King turns Dan Branch into the tire wall, and that's going to be heavy damage for both cars. Uh, Dan Branch isn't going to drive away. He'll get towed off the track, but Justin King is going to limp that car back to the pits, running for about 20th place now. Here's Matt Beck and Austin Sanders as... Uh, oh! He hit an oil patch, and he's going to go into the wall. That's a huge hit, and he is out of the track. Matt Beck, oh, that is a scary incident. Matt Beck just got thrown outside the track, going on board with Tiffany Matthews. Uh, very concerning incident there. Oh, my goodness. That was, that was an ugly, ugly wreck. Hopefully, he's okay. Uh, as J.F. Davila brings his car into the pits... Uh, no word on the 07 car or the 7 car, uh, those drivers' medical conditions as Alex Posington stays out to lead a lap. 
We're so close to the end of this thing that I don't think they're going to call it. Uh, as Posington brings his car into the pits, uh, the lap after, surrendering the lead back to Jeff Fisher now, who uh, is holding a decent gap over uh, JF Davila with just five minutes to go in this race. Uh, these races are 45 minutes, and uh, Jeff Fisher doing what he can, as now it's just two minutes left, and uh, starting to run into some lap traffic there. Looks like Fergal Sheedy's going to interfere. We've got uh, Tiffany Matthews, it looks like, uh, there. Man, these leaders are really struggling to get around Matthews, and uh, Fergal Sheedy now moves over. But it looks like J.F. Davila is going to get a bit of a run coming into the keyhole. J.F. Davila making a move to the inside. Jeff Fisher leaves room for some reason. And uh, Davila completes the pass. But here comes Fisher on the outside. Side by side through the back straightaway. Uh, Fisher and Davila with just two minutes left. This is two laps to go. As uh, the clock is going to expire during this lap. Uh, so next, next uh, lap will be the white flag. Uh, Davila still side by side with Fisher coming through uh, turn four, the Omega Complex here. Uh, five, Jeff Fisher pulls ahead just a little bit. Oh, Davila keeps it on the track. He's not going to surrender easily. Still side by side, two laps to go. Uh, Davila, Fisher still doing battle, still side by side. But coming through here, it looks like Fisher is going to run a bit wide, and Davila is going to take over the top spot. And uh, I think that's game over for Jeff Fisher as Kelly Thomas brings her car into the pits. She would not complete the last lap. Uh, tire issues with that 72 car as J.F. Davila rounds the final turns. And J.F. Davila is going to take his second win of the 2016 PCC Light Series season here at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Very strong run for Jeff Fisher, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to get another win here at Mid-Ohio. Patrick O'Hannigan, P3, how about that? Doing a great job for his team. Gabriel Messina, P4, got around Lenore Scurry late in the going, who finished in 5th place. Alex Posington had a horrible pit stop, fell back to 8th place. Sam Burkhart got back up into the top 10 late in the going. Uh, Greg Maddox there in 8th place. James Beverly dropped all the way to 9th. Denny Adams rounds out the top 10. Lucian Ekdal Jr.'s early pit stop bit him in the end, and he finished in 11th place. Zach Meyer... Uh, got his way up to P12. Dustin Oliver hung on, uh, just stayed consistent. P13. Roman Carpon in 14th place, a good run for him. JC Carpenter, uh, P15. Casey Lester still being consistent in 16th place. Dima Van Hull, Carter Fitzgerald, uh, Dean Wormer, and Trek Tauger rounds out the top 20, getting a top 20 for that Tauger Racing Unit team. And now looking at the driver's point, Sam Burkhart extends his lead in the championship even more to a 57-point lead over his teammate Dustin Oliver. Lenore Scurry moves up to third place in points. Jeff Fisher, after that strong second-place run, is in fourth. Uh, Casey Lester rounds out the top five in points as Lucian Ekdal Jr. is in, fit, is in sixth. Uh, Greg Maddox, seventh. James Beverly moves up to P8 in points. Matt Beck, I hope he's okay. That was a very rough hit uh, in Thunder Valley. Uh, is in ninth in points. Justin King, P10. Uh, Damon Jones and Denny Adams, teammates tied for 11th in points. Carter Fitzgerald, 13th. Alex Posington and J.F. Davila, 14th and 15th in the standings. J.F. Davila jumps up into the top 20 after that win. Isaac Parsons, P16, had a rough week. Uh, Roman Carpont, P17. Dima Van Hall, P18. Daniel Bouchard, who had a rough week as well in uh, 19th place. And Alex Constantine rounds out the top 20 in points.